Today is Friday the 23rd of February 2024 and I am a little bit shocked. Let me tell you something personally. So tomorrow the 24th of February is my son, uh, this is Max's birthday, yeah, he's going to be five years old. For me, being a parent, being a dad is, it's what life is all about. Uh, you work non-stop to just provide for your children. I'm sure if you're a parent or you have nieces or nephews or you have children in your life, you'll understand uh, what I mean. Uh, for some people, they're not actually able to be in a position where they can uh, conceive naturally. So they use IVF. I never, ever, just ever in my wildest imagination thought that something like IVF would become political would become the somebody somewhere who knows nothing about your life makes a decision to ban you becoming a parent because that's what that's the that's the path uh, when Amy Coney Barrett um, I think during her when they were cross-examining her whatever it is you know when they decide to pick uh, the Supreme Court Justice when she mentioned it I thought it was a frivolous comment throw away but they seriously want to ban IVF that is the plan and just I just feel, really feel, because what are you going to do in life, yeah? Surely you share the love. You you bring a family up. I mean, it's just, it is incredible. Incredible. It just, this is, can't, this could not be a political scenario or situation. This can't be something uh, where a group of people who have a, political persuasion suddenly affect everybody else. This can't be a left or right scenario or situation. This has to be bigger than this. Just stop, stop, stop. Anybody who is literally in Alabama who thinks that this is the right way, uh, this is beyond telling somebody what they can and can't do with their body. This is telling somebody uh, doesn't matter how much love, how much care, uh, no, you want to bring more children into the world, etc. You can't. No IVF for you. That's, that's, that is exactly the position right now. It's not a joke. It's not somebody like uh, making it up for clicks. It's not some political person shouting about just trying to get attention. This is a serious situation which is developing right in front of our eyes. And the saddest thing is, while this is happening, you have, for example, so many clowns on social media going on about scenarios and situations which aren't really, at the end of the day, that significant, that important. You have people who have platforms and voices, whatever they're moaning and complaining about. This is serious. Okay? This isn't some person with a blue tick trying to get likes by saying something dumb. I think those that want to prevent people from having a family should almost be forced, forced to go and spend time with parents from an IVF. It's not... Oh, if you have a particular polit political situation, you have IVF. If you have a particular sexual preference, you have IVF. If you have a particular religion, you have IVF. If you have a particular skin color, you have IVF. This is not that. It is not that conversation. This is one of the most important subjects, I think, in my life I've ever heard about. Again, the fact that some people feel... It's right to stop others being loving parents. No more IVF, making it illegal so you could get arrested if you wanted to be a parent and you unfortunately can't uh, conceive naturally. You could get arrested for having IVF. Arrested. Jailed. You, you can have 91 felonies and it's all allegations, all deep state. How ridiculous is it? And then you have people like Tim Scott. Tim Scott has an opinion on every single thing possible. He's asked about the ruling in Alabama. Oh, I don't know too much about it. I, I, please, if you've never left a comment before, leave a comment now. Your thoughts on this IVF thing. It can't, this can't really, really be a serious way forward for 
any civilization. Just, it is just wrong. Do you wrong. have a reaction to the Alabama Supreme Court ruling on the fact that embryos are children? Yeah, I was all for it. We need to have more kids. We need to have an opportunity to do that. And this, I thought this was the right thing to do. But, but IVF is used to have more children. And right now, IVF services are paused at some of the clinics in Alabama. Aren't you concerned that this could impact people who are trying to have kids? Well, that's for that's for another conversation. People need to have that. We need more kids. We need the people to, to have the opportunity to have kids. Senator, what do you say to the women right now in Alabama who no longer have access to IVF or who will not as a result of this ruling? Well, well, that's a hard one. It really is. It's really hard because, uh, again, you want people to have that opportunity. And, and that's what I was telling her. We need more kids. Republicans are recognize that this is politically difficult for them. When you have three Republican governors that came out immediately, Sununu, uh, Lee in Tennessee, and um, there was a third one. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Kemp in, in Georgia, another important uh, state. They all came out right away in support of IVF, recognizing the importance of this, because not only does this impact women, but it also impacts men who are trying to have families when they're dealing with infertility with their wives. So the last thing Republicans want to talk about is this issue. And I think you're going to see them trying to skirt around it and not give a direct answer the way Nikki Haley has. She's trying to take both sides. You can't have it both ways. They talk about they, you know, you want to be pro-life, but then they're stopping people from the ability to have families who struggle with these difficulties, and it's scientifically proven to be helpful. So I think Republicans, this is the last thing that they want, but um, we've seen what their agenda is, and if this is going to go, starting with Alabama, how many other states are going to cascade and, and, and go this route with it? They didn't think it would happen with abortion, and now it's happening with IVF. Yeah, which is it? They can't have both sides of this issue. And it's just another example of the absolute extreme position that Republicans have backed themselves into a corner on, where they've allowed the extremists on this issue in the Republican Party to dominate. And um, like I said, it's politically perilous for them. And if women weren't already inspired to go out and vote because right, our rights are directly under threat here, this is another example of where your vote matters and who you put in office matters. And uh, I think that they, re Republicans are going to rue the day that they decided to go after women and their rights, particularly on this issue. And we are witnessing a domino effect in Alabama after the state Supreme Court ruled frozen embryos are children. That means today, two more health centers announced that they are pausing some types of IVF treatment, bringing the total number of clinics putting a hold there to three. Uh, advocates for reproductive rights warned that this ruling would have devastating consequences. And now the Biden campaign is calling Alabama's decision, quote, a blueprint for Republicans' extreme MAGA reproductive agenda. He wants a total abortion ban with no exceptions. He supported bans that would not only criminalize abortion, but ban IVF treatments and common forms of birth control and that you voted against access to contraception. Where are you on these issues? Is that an accurate assessment of where you are? Because that's not in step with the American people. No, Shannon, look, I'm, I'm pro-life. I've, I've said very clearly, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I believe in the sanctity of every single human life. So I come to Congress with deep, personally held convictions. Like Gabriel and Spencer Goydell, who have been trying to have a baby for years and have been diagnosed with unexplained genetic fertility. They just started IVF in Alabama but don't know whether they will be allowed to continue now with Alabama's court decision. We really want a family. Um, we've known since we got married that, that we want um, children and, and this is our best shot. I think it's just a thoughtless decision. Um, being so committed to this idea of being pro-life that they're not thinking about how a decision like this affects people trying to start families. Well, the idiocy of Senator Tuberville is palpable and just uh, extraordinary at times. This is not the only time he's sounded like an absolute moron, and he's paid for by the taxpayers of Alabama. Um, listen, this is another example of a kryptonite issue for Republicans. They know that the majority of the American people are pro-choice, and the overwhelming majority of people are pro-IVF, including their own constituents in the Republican Party, including the evangelicals who overwhelming, overwhelmingly support IVF. 
Um, there have been 8 million babies born through IVF in this country. So according to this Alabama Supreme Court ruling, I guess then all of those babies and all of those families who have had the gift of life, thanks to this technology, should not have been born. And all of those people who are looking forward to having children that suffer from infertility, which is over 6 million women in this country, um, they just shouldn't have that opportunity. I, this Republicans do not want to have this discussion. Because if I'm the Democrats, I'm coming out and, and showcasing all of the families in my district or state or in a national election that have had successful IVF mm -hmm. pregnancies and, tell, and say to them, I challenge Republicans to say that these children shouldn't have had, li shouldn't have had an opportunity at life. I mean, the, the extremism now is really beginning, I think, to sink in for some people, particularly women across this country who feel as though they are under attack, and they are. The rights of women in this country are under attack daily, and the Republican Party is at the helm of it. But we've got to start with the politics. Who do decisions like this, ones that don't just make it harder to end a pregnancy, but now make it harder to start a pregnancy, win over? You may immediately think evangelicals, but that's not entirely clear. Just ask Kellyanne Conway, who Political Reports has shown Republican lawmakers crystal clear polling that says Americans across the board support IVF. 85% of all respondents to her polling firm, KA Consulting, 78% among self-identified pro-life advocates, and 83% among evangelical Christians. So I ask again, who do decisions like this win over? Kelly is using IVF after trying to get pregnant for two years. They started treatments in October. Kelly and Jimmy, thank you both for being here. I wonder to you, Kelly, when you first heard about this ruling and that it could affect IVF treatments, what went through your mind? Um, I mean, initially just terror um, because we've already invested so much time and money and just physical and emotional anguish into this process and to think that it could have all been for nothing and that we could be ending our journey to be able to have children. It, it was absolutely terrifying. You and Jimmy have oh. been trying to start a family now for years. You, you started in October. You're slated to try another retrieval in April. Do you know, either of you, if that's still going to happen? Are, are doctors talking to you about pausing treatments and about what's next? Uh, so we did get a call from our, uh, our clinic, and they have released a statement saying that as of right now, they are continuing business as usual. Um, they will be continuing all IVF, and uh, as of right now, we're still on track to uh, to do our procedure in April. And Jimmy, are you worried that that could change? I am. Uh, it's so unpredictable right now, uh, with you know two well-known ones shutting down that I know of. Uh, you know, UAB shutting down their um, IVF treatments, uh, as well as another facility that I'm the name escaping me at the moment. Uh, it is something I am concerned about. Hopefully, um, hopefully we'll be able to work around that. And Kelly, did you ever think that this debate about abortion access, Roe versus Wade, all of that would impact your ability to actually have a child? No, never. Uh, in my mind, I didn't see the correlation. Um, it never occurred to me that people would take the overturning of, of Roe v. Wade and link it to IVF um, because it, at its very core, IVF is trying to create life and, and build families. So I just don't understand the jump. I, I never would have imagined that. Jimmy, there are a lot of politicians. I mean, I'm, I'm here in Washington, but in your home state, uh, elsewhere in this country, 
who uh, support this here. ruling yeah, from the Alabama the Supreme Court, for one of the if you were to talk had. to them, what would you I say to them you about how this impacts you, how this impacts your year. family? We have a year coming up. The foundations are ready. Well, for I mean, the, the first thing I would ask had. them is, did they do any actual research before making this decision? Or was it on a whim based on, you know, riding the high of overturning Roe v. Wade? I would ask them, you know, how would they feel if their granddaughter or their daughter was was trying to have a child via IVF and this rule prevented them from doing it, you know, how would they feel, um, you know, how would they feel about the fact that they're they're halting families from growing or even starting? We have a year coming up. The foundation is ready for one of the best years we've ever had. Yeah, so, I mean, so many questions. I mean, Kelly, so many women, um, you know, they are so desperate to have a family and it is so expensive and physical, as you just mentioned, physically taxing to go through this process. Year. We have a year coming I know up. that your clinic is moving for forward. That's great to hear. But how are you doing you all emotionally with all of this uncertainty? Uh, we're going to have a great year. We have a year coming up. It's extremely stressful. One of the um, best years we've at this had. point, I feel like I want to wish you all a very happy thing that was already uh, taking a, a year. huge we have a year coming up. The chunk of my life one of the best years we've is ever now. Had. I want to wish you all essentially happy Thanksgiving consuming my life we're completely. Have a great year um, a year coming up the foundations are ready for I really the best can't turn anywhere have. right now without hearing about wish the you all a very happy Thanksgiving. and uh, we're gonna have a great year we have in a, a way that's a really up. good thing are ready for one because of the it's getting attention and hopefully that's going to cause you all action a very happy Thanksgiving. Um, but also we're in have a, great a way we have a year coming. i still have Front a job washers do not to. require the I'll tub to fill with water like you have to help maintain i have a life that that's i want to do frontless washers do not require the tub to fill with water like the tub to fill with water and anyone who's ever washers do not require the tub to fill with water like topwood washers it is significantly less counterproductive to never less water and so our strength in the top of this is extremely difficult. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that. And I really do genuinely wish both of you the very best and hope for the best as you continue this process. Kelly and Jimmy Belmont, thank you both very much for sharing your story with us. Thank you for having time. Amanda, you almost died because you couldn't get the termination that you needed during your pregnancy uh, that was um, causing you immense pain and threatening your life. Um, And now in the IVF journey, can you explain to those like, I don't know, Tommy Tuberville, who doesn't seem to know what IVF is, the stress, the waiting, the process, the pain of IVF, of that journey, uh, of what it's like, you know, without these bans now that are, you know, hitting states like Alabama? Yes. Thank you for asking that. Any person who has been through IVF will tell you it is one of the most grueling, most difficult things a person can go through, not just physically, but emotionally, psychologically. There is so much anxiety. There is so much unknown Um, There's so much fear. And now these laws that are now in effect in Alabama and could spread across the country, thanks to Trump, um, you know, it just adds another layer of fear. And you're already going through the most grueling thing imaginable. And now we have to worry about the safety of our embryos. We have to worry about whether we can be held liable if something goes wrong. And by the way, the process of IVF is extremely precise and extremely intricate, but there are lots of scenarios where things can go wrong. And that's just the nature right. of, of the process. And so if something goes wrong, am I now going to be held liable for wrongful death because science didn't fall in my favor? I mean, the fear is is just massive. IVF alone, you're dealing with the constant stress of the odds, the shots, the appointments, the changes in your body, the hope your body will perform, the hope the procedure will perform, the hope the numbers will land in your direction, the waiting, the constant waiting and hoping. And I'm wondering if you could answer this question, 
it's so hard. It's so grueling, as you say. Why do you do it? <laughs> because we want a family. We want kids more than anything. Um, and it's something that, you know, I feel very fortunate that IVF was an option for my husband and I, and that it is something that we can still pursue. But now I'm living in constant fear that that choice is going to be taken away from me. Do you have a reaction to the Alabama Supreme Court ruling on the fact that embryos are children? Yeah, I was all for it. We need to have more kids. We need to have an opportunity to do that. And this, I thought this was the right thing to do. But, but IVF is used to have more children. And right now, IVF services are paused at some of the clinics in Alabama. Aren't you concerned that this could impact people who are trying to have kids? Well, that's for that's for another conversation. People need to have that. We need more kids. We need the people to, to have the opportunity to have kids. Senator, what do you say to the women right now in Alabama who no longer have access to IVF or who will not as a result of this ruling? Well, well, that's a hard one. It really is. It's really hard because, uh, again, you want people to have that opportunity. And, and that's what I was telling her. We need more kids. Donald's of Florida, a rising star in the GOP, appeared similarly confused, expressing support for the Alabama ruling and also IVF, which the Alabama ruling now essentially prohibits. The Alabama Supreme Court just ruled that embryos are children. Do you believe embryos are children? I do, because embryos grow into being an adults like we are. Congressman, do you believe in IVF? I think there are women who have okay. decided to seek that process, and that's a good thing. That's an um, important so thing. Women have been giving, having miscarriages and toilets in our country, have been denied access to emergency care because of what has been happening in Venice, as the governor said most recently, putting access to... IVF at risk. Think about that. Individuals, couples who want to start a family are now being deprived of access to what can help them start a family. So on the one hand, the proponents are saying that an individual doesn't have a right to end an unwanted pregnancy. And on the other hand, the individual does not have a right to start a family. I never thought it would ever get to this point. Thousands of families like Rebecca Matthews in Alabama caught off guard. After multiple miscarriages, they turned to IVF, freezing several embryos to maximize the likelihood of getting pregnant. Without IVF, we would not have our two children. Now, Matthew says they don't know what will happen to their remaining frozen embryo stored at another Alabama clinic. The thing that's scary for us is if we choose to discard our embryo, could we be charged with something? Is that a criminal offense now? Is, is that murder? Moments ago, and for the first time, President Biden reacting forcefully to the Alabama Supreme Court ruling that defined an embryo as a child. Biden's statement says, quote, the disregard for women's ability to make these decisions for themselves and their families is outrageous and unacceptable. But this is the newest front in one of the most emotional and consequential political battles of the last half century. The question on the right of on the right of when life begins. It started with abortion and Roe v. Wade 51 years ago and has now expanded into IVF. Last week's unprecedented Alabama ruling is creating new pain and widespread uncertainty for couples facing infertility. Alabama's largest hospital has suspended all IVF treatments and at least two other clinics have followed suit with experts predicting more to come. And so I know you want to know what I bought. So you want to know that I got the George Clinton doll. Does everybody know who George Clinton is? Do you know PFUNK? No. Okay, well, there is lessons to be taught. Like Bootsy Collins, anybody know who Bootsy Collins is? Okay, so there's some education that needs to be done. I can see that. Um, I got a Miles Davis album and then um, a couple of cards. Now, as you have now asked about the women of Alabama. The decision by the court in Alabama is shocking and at the same time post the Dobbs decision, not surprising. I talked about it from the beginning when the Dobbs decision came down, that we were looking at what potentially would be the beginning of the erosion of so many fundamental rights, in particular around reproductive freedom. And so we have seen that states around our country have taken everything from 
an individual's ability to make decisions about their own body, to access to reproductive health care, um, limiting how people can get access to reproductive health care in, in very substantial ways. We've seen clinics close, things of that nature. We have seen laws that would criminalize doctors and nurses, provide up to prison for life for administering reproductive health care. And, um, and we knew that IVF was always very much on the table. And so what we have seen in Alabama is, sure enough, um, it has now been attacked, and the access to reproductive health care through IVF is being taken from countless individuals and families. And this is about an individual's right, but it also affects entire families. And the irony of it all is that on the one hand, these proponents are, are suggesting that an individual and a woman does not have the right to end an unwanted pregnancy, and on the other hand, does not have the right to become pregnant if that is her choice and her desire and her dream. So I think that everyone should understand we each have a responsibility and the ability to change this trajectory, and elections matter. Access to IVF is going to be stripped away. I mean, it's already hard enough to access insurance coverage for IVF for many families. And the idea that now you have to be worried about where you live, or for me, where my husband is stationed, and whether or not that would even be legal for us to pursue IVF, to move our embryos to that state so that we didn't have to travel for treatments. Um, there's, I mean, there's just more things than I can even articulate at this moment that I'm concerned about. But your legal position, IVF treatment, and I'm not going to ask again, just this last time, criminalizing it, well, would it be constitutional? I think there's a clear answer. But, Senator, I've repeatedly said, as has every other nominee who sat in this seat, that we can't answer questions in the abstract that would have to be decided in the course of the judicial process with a case. Some legislature would actually have to do that, and then litigants would have to come to court. There would have to be briefs and arguments and consultation with colleagues and opinion writing and consideration of precedent. So an off-the-cuff reaction to that would just circumvent the judicial process. Well, uh, again, I'm disappointed. I think Tracy would find that response somewhat chilling because she and thousands, maybe millions of women, potential parents, would be horrified to think that IVF treatment could be made criminal. And I understand you're not answering the question, but I think um, she would be deeply fearful. I have so many reactions. I'll try to distill them. <laughs> I think they know full well what they're doing. They have been embedded with the extremist right-wing uh, evangelical community. Tommy Tuberville is part of that community. They know full well what they're doing. They've just been caught. Mm -hmm. I mean, even Kellyanne Conway, the Washington Post reported, uh, circulated a memo with polling that showed 86% of Americans support IVF they went ahead. They just never thought they'd get caught. Mm -hmm. This is so connected to exactly the same scenario with Dobbs, where they're beginning to hide and pretend to moderate their position on abortion because they know it's wildly unpopular. The Alabama Supreme Court just ruled that embryos are children. Do you believe embryos are children? I do, because embryos grow into being an adult like we are. I, I want to just ask you about some news this week. It's pretty big news in the world of women's health. Alabama Supreme Court ruling that frozen embryos are considered to be children. Do you think that they got that ruling right? Well, I think the court correctly assessed the law, but I believe the Alabama law needs to change because the Republican Party cannot be the party against family formation. And when we're at the point where we're confusing like families like those you just had on with abortionists, like something is totally wrong. The people who want to have a family should have the government and the law on their side and the notion that discarded embryos in, in IVF somehow turn these people who want children and want families and want the American dream into criminals is, is really wrong. So for those in the Republican Party and the 
a pro, pro-life movement, as they describe themselves, who say that this is necessarily the next frontier, they're wrong. Pro-life means being pro-IVF. And I've worked side by side with progressive Democrats like Sarah Jacobs to make sure that our military members can have access to IVF in the event of deployment or other challenges to family formation. So you're always going to find me on the side of family formation, not against family formation. I believe the Alabama legislature ought to amend their law so that IVF can occur safely in, in the Yellowhammer state.